Hey there, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm going to be showing you some of the meals that my family had this past week. All of these meals are very easy to throw together. That's kind of what the theme of this video is today. Simple, easy meals. I just know a lot of people are really busy at this time, so I thought that might be helpful. But anyways, I hope you enjoy this video today and let's go get to cooking. We're gonna start out by making these buttery chicken bites and some couscous. So to begin in this bowl, I'm going to add all of my seasoning. So I'm just adding some salt and pepper, kind of to taste depending on how much you want, of course. Now I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of paprika, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and onion powder. And then if you do want it spicy, go ahead and add about an eighth of a teaspoon of some cayenne. I didn't want it spicy though. I also added in a teaspoon of Italian seasoning and stir this together. Over to my two medium-sized chicken breasts. I'm just going to cut them into smaller pieces, kind of like cubing them, I guess I should say. This chicken recipe is so, so simple to throw together. So after I added my chicken to my casserole dish, I'm just going to be sprinkling the seasonings right on top, just like this. I tried to do it as even as possible, but of course it is definitely not perfect. So on top of that, I'm going to add about half a tablespoon of some olive oil. And then for the butter, I'm adding about two tablespoons of butter that I just cut into smaller pieces. This bakes in a preheated oven to 420 degrees for about 16 to 18 minutes or until it reaches 165 degrees internally. While that is baking, I'm just going to be making some couscous. This is the couscous I'm using. It's just this box form. It is so simple to make. I love making this type of couscous on the side just because, like I said, it's simple to make and then it is a really good side dish. Here's the finished product. This recipe is so, so good. You really gotta trust me on this one. That chicken is unbelievably juicy. It's just really, really scrumptious. Anyways, this is such a good quick and easy dinner idea. My husband's been asking for these garlic butter pork chops, so that is what we're making now. To my saucepan, I added a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of olive oil. Once that gets hot and the butter melts down, I'm going to add my five pork chops, and I am going to season these pork chops with salt and pepper on each side. Pork chops do tend to dry out very, very easily, so you only want to cook these for a couple of minutes on each side at most, just because, like I said, you don't want to overcook them and dry them out. But now that they are completely cooked, I removed them to a separate plate and covered that plate with some aluminum foil to keep them warm. With the excess oil on my pan, I added a couple tablespoons of some minced garlic, and I'm going to let this garlic get fragrant. Once it is fragrant, I'm going to add in one tablespoon of some all-purpose flour, stir this around, and let the flour get a nice golden color. So now that it is golden, I'm going to slowly add in a half a cup of some chicken broth. You do want to add it in slowly just to ensure that no clumps form. I brought the sauce up to a simmer for about two minutes to let it thicken. Once it was thick, I added in a half of a lemon. You don't have to add the lemon in, but I do think it adds a lot of great fresh flavor. I whisked this all together, and now you're gonna add in your three-fourths cup of some heavy whipping cream with your half a teaspoon of some garlic powder. You're going to, once again, whisk this all together, bring it up to a slight simmer to let this sauce thicken for about a minute. And then once it does thicken up, you're going to add your pork chops back in. After your pork chops are warmed through in that delicious sauce, it is ready to serve. Here's my plate. I served it over some mashed potatoes with plenty of that sauce. And then I also served it with broccoli. This recipe is so good. You could serve this over rice, couscous, anything of that nature. 
This was another one of my husband's dinner requests. So we're going to be making some ultra fun quesadillas. That's what we call them. But to my pan, I have one pound of some ground beef in there. I'm just going to cook this ground beef all the way through. Once it is cooked through and I drained out all of the excess grease, I'm just going to be adding about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of some taco seasoning with a little bit of water. I'm going to stir this all together to combine. To assemble these quesadillas, I have a cooking tray right here. I lined it with some aluminum foil and now I'm spraying it with some avocado oil spray. I didn't mention this before, but we actually are baking these quesadillas. It is just way quicker to do if you're making a larger amount of quesadillas, but I just put medium sized tortillas on my pan and then I'm just adding some refried rings to the top of those. And then I'm going to be adding some of that yummy taco meat that we made up. The last layer you're going to do is some cheese and then add an additional tortilla on top of that. You could make more or less quesadillas, of course, depending on your family size, but this was just perfect for us. It also made for perfect leftovers the next day. I sprayed some more avocado oil on top. These baked in my oven on 400 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes. Just keep a close eye on them. You don't want them too crispy, but you don't want them underdone. Here they are. They are nice and crispy on both sides. I just served it with guacamole, salsa, sour cream, and tomatoes. Like I said previously, I love making quesadillas like this. They're so flavorful and easy. I haven't made chicken alfredo in a really long time, so now that is what we're making. We're going to start with the chicken first. I have one chicken breast right here that I sliced horizontally into three different pieces, so it appears as three smaller sized chicken breasts. And then on the other plate, I have a third a cup of some Parmesan cheese. I'm going to season the chicken on both sides with some oregano and salt and pepper and then you're going to press it into the parmesan cheese and try to get it coated in as much parmesan cheese as you possibly can. This baked in a preheated oven to 420 degrees for 16 to 18 minutes. While that's in the oven baking, I'm just going to boil up my pound of fettuccine noodles. If you don't have fettuccine noodles on hand, you could just use any type of other pasta you have on hand. Now over here to my other pot, I'm going to add about five tablespoons of butter. Once it melts down, I'm going to add three cloves of garlic and let the garlic become fragrant. Add in your two tablespoons of all-purpose flour at this point. This is going to thicken this recipe up really nicely. You're going to whisk it all together and let it become a nice golden color. This chicken alfredo is seriously so good. It's the only alfredo sauce I use. It's just super simple to throw together. Now I'm adding in one and a half cups of some heavy whipping cream. As you see, I am adding it in slowly just to make sure there are no clumps in the end. You're also going to want to add in your one and a half cups of some normal milk at this point. I'm also adding that in slowly. Once you bring your sauce up to a simmer, you're going to add in your cup of some Parmesan cheese and then you're going to whisk it all together and then it will thicken up really nicely. Once your sauce is nice and creamy like this, I like to add in about three tablespoons of some fresh basil that I just cut up into smaller pieces. You definitely do not need to add the fresh basil in, but I just think it adds some really great flavor. I just stirred that all together to combine. And then you're gonna add in your pound of fettuccine noodles. Once again, stir all of it to combine and then it is ready to serve. Here's the finished product. After that chicken was through cooking, I just cut it up into smaller pieces and tossed it on top of my pasta. If you've never made homemade Alfredo before, I really recommend this recipe. It is so, so good. 
Will and I were both wanting hamburgers on this night, so now we're making some hamburger sloppy joes. To get this one started, I'm going to cut up my six dill pickles and one white onion into smaller pieces. I just set that to the side, and now I'm going to brown my one pound of some lean ground beef. After the beef is cooked and you removed all of the excess grease, you're going to add in your tablespoon of some mayonnaise along with some salt and pepper. Also going to add in about a third a cup of this Thousand Island dressing. Just stir all of these ingredients together and let this simmer on a very low heat for about a minute or two. After you add your pickles and onions in and give this a good stir and let them heat through, it is ready to serve. Here's the finished product. I served mine on a toasted bun with cheese and iceberg lettuce. This is such a fun way to make hamburgers, especially when it is way too cold outside to grill up some traditional hamburgers on the barbecue grill. And that is a wrap of this video today. I really hope you enjoyed it and got some meal inspiration. As always, I would really love to have you over here on my YouTube channel. So go ahead and subscribe down below the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.